Blended Podcasts. Brought to you by Blended Audio. Audio. ArtPod is a South African-focused visual arts podcast hosted by Claude Chandler. Join me weekly every Saturday as I'm joined by a new guest who occupies a position within the visual arts community, ranging from fine arts, tattooing, framing, and logistics. Welcome to ArtPod. Pod Art? Art pod. <laughs> I just did that to get under your skin. Um, I'm joined today by the big boss man, Peter. Oh my God, I forgot the <laughs> Matesa. Right? All right, I'm joined today by Peter Matesa. Yeah. Um, thank you for being on the show. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank well, you for having me on the show. I made you do. Yeah. Thank you for <laughs> having the show. Um, so before we start, um, can you just talk? through blended audio or not blended audio blended podcast and how that came to be yeah um so initially what happened was um i got approached by um alistair who runs um what's it called center stage which airs every thursday and he came to me basically just asking if he can use our facility as a space to meet with um, some of his artists. Mm. Um, and he didn't really want to use our equipment or anything. He just wanted a central space to meet people. Oh. And then um, I was like, you know, give me a couple of days so I can like think about it. And then a couple of days went by and like, you know, a few night, sleepless nights um, when the brain's going. And I, mm. I kind of came up with the idea that you know, I can host the guy, I've got the facility to do it, we've got the time on Sundays to do it, and um, the only way that it can really work is if I've got um, more shows. So I came to him and I told him, look, we can do it, but we're going to need um, six other shows to fill up the rest of the week, mm-hmm. um, and then that way we can do this. And then he's, um, he sat down with me, we just w- worked through some themes, and then we started hunting down some um, you know, uh, hosts, mm. um, which was not such a hard thing to do, actually. Like, I, I thought it would have been harder, but um, the host that we got, I'm really proud of everyone who's doing what they're doing. Um, every, everyone's going like the extra mile to like bring like quality information and like um, just create like quality products. Mm. Um, and I think we're at a point now where we're going to start like doing like digital um, advertising and stuff to get it. To a broader audience and um, just get more people involved because we've got enough of a bank now for people to like start off at episode one and actually follow through um, the season that we've been creating for sure, each have show. Sure, a binge session, exactly, I guess. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's how people do it nowadays. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's on demand, you know, mm. so it's like, um, you know, with uh, podcasts kind of being, it's, it's semi-popular at the moment, uh, I guess, in South Africa because you can hear people talking about it in the streets, like, you know, have you listened to this podcast or mm. I'm listening to this thing? And it's like, I thought, um, well, why not create like the first South African network of podcasts? Mm. Um, there's no one, no one doing it. And like most people who end up doing podcasts um, get disheartened because they don't get the response they usually or what they expected in the first couple of weeks or months or whatever it is. Um, and generally that's because people don't, you know, have the capacity or money to do it, you know, sure. to push it or the facility to um, create quality products or, or this thing or that thing, you know. So we kind of have like a couple of those limitations lifted and um, I've got the space and we've got the time mm. um, and then all I needed was the creatives um, and that's where the hosts come in, you know. they. They produce all of their shows themselves. I don't own any of their content. That's all intellectual property. And like, if we ever make money off the podcasts, the the hosts are definitely going to get, um, you know, their money for the intellectual property for the stuff Whoopee! that they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, yeah, I, don't, sure. I don't want people working for free, but, um, you know, at this stage, like, um, everyone was so willing to like just get a podcast started sure. and doing something so well i think something like this yeah you need to invest that time and energy and i think it also is just an indicator of what people are willing to do and their kind of enthusiasm mm. and yeah there has to be a product as you say before yeah. you can sell it exactly and also just see if you cut out for it like it's exactly um, 
listening to my podcast. I, I'm glad to see there's an improvement. <laughs> and it's definitely a skill. Yes. Um, in the booth. For sure. Yes. Um, and just how to compose yourself. And I even see, I mean, some of the earlier episodes, there are people who have experience being in sound booths and re- having their voices recorded. And yes. you can just see there's a huge yeah difference yeah. <laughs> from the newbies it's weird because like um like in your general sense in just your human body your your voice is like vibrating through your entire body so to you it seems like super bassy and like mm. um you're not used to hearing yourself like that um like over speakers all of that resonance is gone and you sound like completely weird and like yes. a lot of people find like that super annoying and i've been in the voice industry for such a long time that i can listen to my own voice without being annoyed okay um, and i've also found a couple of ways to deliver to annoy myself less mm. you know because <laughs> <laughs> you know that happens you're like it's like sometimes you f- there's something you s- you say or you find a way that you say something that irritates you and mm. you start working on that or um you know you just focus on the things that you can improve as a as a presenter or as a host sure. as a voice artist for that sense um and even you from just spending time in the booth right now you would probably be able to do the kind of work that we actually do at our facility which is revoicing content you know being a voice artist and be... acting and that kind of stuff you <laughs> sure know? um just from the uh, you know being comfortable behind the mic mm. yeah um the main reason i actually decided to start off blended podcast was um blended audio had no real sense of um advertising going on in any way there was no working website there was like a, a splash page that led you to a facebook with just our logos and nothing really happening so um i've made some work into getting our website working well and like you know showing people everything that we can do um and then there's also a separate page for the podcasts and everything so evidently what we got out of the podcast was um daily advertisement for blended audio mm. um and then also you know a direct route to a working website where people can you know see our products and decide whether or not they want to do business with us i was hoping this would inspire people to join our network that would be great um my idea is to have a network if i can if i can run a network like 24 hours a day of like podcasts pushing out every hour sure. that would be great if that okay. could become my business where we're making ad revenue on you know um because we built like a good audience or whatever that to me is where i want to take the business but currently where we are is um we're redubbing foreign content into english yes um which is which has been a blessing i've made um my career so far out of it and um it's i like i like my job a lot and uh, the the people that we have are phenomenal mm. um the only thing that i find is that it's so reliant on having a client that um we can't we can't expose ourselves to that kind of um how can we say danger if one client drops us and the entire company falls apart so sure. you know a part of uh, creating the blended podcast was to create a sustainable product that we create ourselves mm. um, and that we are not um, in need of a client we are just in need of talent and we have a bunch of talent in cape town no, so, for sure and I, yeah and as you say i think there's definitely a hunger for it yeah. um even for the the visual arts podcast the reason i was so quick to say yes was um my desire to hear a visual arts podcast there is one called unframed yeah. which is great um but the content released is quite slow and there's not that much of it um and it's just nice to kind of share you know local visual arts stories exactly, and yeah. people in the community you see that's the that's the problem i saw in the first place with like just helping out one person was like it's not really going to benefit them or us in any way mm. so you know having the network it's like if everyone is working under the one blanket then you know people come to blended podcasts because there's new content every day regardless of what the content is 
there's new content to listen to. And whether you're into like uh, emerging technologies or um, art or drama or f um, s sound and music, we've got all of that stuff covered. So um, it's kind of uh, a place that I've tried to create a place where people can come to and kind of listen to all of their interest and mm -hmm. not just like support one um, uh, podcast at a time because I think that's where most podcasts end up falling, um, you know, through the frames. It's mm -hmm. like they they get to a point where it's been a year, they're still just getting 37 listens every month and then they lose hope and then they just kind of let it go. And that's how, me, how, mo, how most South African podcasts actually end up, um, you know, dying down. Here, we have the opportunity of this space that we have available and um, we're obviously just then reliant on the hosts and their availability because there's obviously a lot of research and stuff that needs to go into every episode for each of these uh, shows. No, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a little bit, a little bit less for some than others. Mm. But like a lot of, um, you know, especially like um, feed me honesty uh, is about like lifestyle and like health and stuff. So I know the presenter Hazel Priscilla goes into a lot of detail um, with like health and hair and like everything you can mm. think about. Um, but she researches like so well. And like she talks about stuff and I'm like, holy shit, I've never even like thought about it. Sure. Um, and that stuff women think about that, you know, me as a as a male, I don't think about those things all the time. And like maybe <laughs> sure. it's a good thing to hear the, about those things every mm. once in a while, you know, um, especially if you're like into developing as a human being and like being part of society. Uh, you kind of need to know how women feel about things. Mm. Um, and a lot of women are like very health conscious. Um, and just by living with, with Hazel, we've been living together for like four years, just over four years. Um, and she's totally in charge of our food mm. because I couldn't care what I eat. <laughs> um, and she wants to eat healthy. So mm. yeah, she she has been keeping me on her diet. That's good. I'm kind of in the same boat for sure, and I definitely felt the benefits of it. Yeah, um, but I, I do, I do the dishes and the washing. All right, and yeah. she does the the groceries and the food. Okay, That's that sounds like deal. a great deal. Uh, it's a recent one. We had a big fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's how those deals come to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm okay with that. I, it's, I, I, I believe in a balance. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I think um, we as guys just need to be kind of reminded, and it's like the only way it sticks, right? Yeah. The thing is with us, I think our generation was really bad because um, we had our mums and we had like, you know, help, house help and stuff. So um, we kind of gotten used to being babies, you know, mm -hmm. like you busy drawing here, you know, drawing here and like you just leave your shit there and you go on to the next thing. Sure. And now I'm a big ass grown human being with like a fucking minion around dead on a house. <laughs> and still I'm not like used to putting my not uh, completely my domesticated plate, yet. my plate into a washing machine, you know? Yeah. Um, and I get why I could piss someone off by doing that. So it's stuff I need to work on, obviously, For sure. like every person does. But I think it's also, yeah, I mean, we've kind of gone on a tangent yeah. here, but <laughs> it's like, and I think it's fine. I have to just constantly remind myself and almost like it's um, like a parrot red um, yeah. thing where it doesn't come naturally, but I think that's also fine. Like, yes. even if it has to be drilled into you, it is. that's a way of going about it. Yeah. But I mean, with the podcast, you've definitely covered great genres and, you mm -hmm. know, especially things like health, which are a big part of the zeitgeist and kind of contemporary yes. living now. Um, and just saying building up a podcast ne network, has there been a thing of trying to not poach, but pick up other podcasts and consume them into mm. the blended? Look, at the moment, like... Um it's a it's a slow process mm. with podcasts. It takes about six months to a year for it to show any kind of profit at all. Yeah. So it's a slow game at first, and um, you know I've ha I've had people like approach me with ideas and stuff, 
but at, at this stage you know everyone is kind of working pro bono and like mm. you know um running six shows uh pro bono with the guys that i'm working with it's just um three other engineers that are working with me four um that are working on this project with me and they're all doing it um you know for free um with the hopes of creating a product that we can you know sure. you know make some money off one day um which is essentially a product that we would own um but i've got good guys alex and stefan um mostly because they've been mixing this stuff yanu has been helping off with uh, freaky fridays mm. um so yeah there's there's a lot of help from every from all sides um it's just a matter of like um there's a bit of pressure of on me on making sure that this sure. project um doesn't like fall through yeah and i'm uh, i've always like thought of myself as quite a determined person to make sure that you know if i take on a project i know exactly what's going on and like where i'm going to take it and like what the plan is for the future of it um i never start a project thinking about just like starting it there's always you know six months or a year two years in advance that i've planned out already um and the thing that i've realized uh which is kind of a bad thing that i need to work on is like all of this stuff is already worked out in my head but i think i think i've already spoken to people about it sure and then like later on people realize that um they never got this information yes and then um uh it's just me not sharing that information because i i'm like constantly in my head thinking about like um how i can like expand on this idea and you know having these internal uh, conversations with myself <laughs> almost makes me feel like i've had this conversation <laughs> being with there someone. done that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um you know w- with you you've done like 50 minute episodes and i keep telling you yes. uh, you know to keep it to 25 yeah, you yeah, need sure. to save the long form <laughs> stuff for later um but that's like um part of my plan you know if mm. we we get the long form stuff later and um eventually i wanted to get it onto youtube but we have like a whole um set and everything available for the podcasts and stuff so that that's kind of the end goal there no for sure i mean for those of you listening it we should be doing 25 minute episodes sometimes i get carried away or sometimes i get yeah. they lock themselves out yeah. of the studio that's and helpful too. Yeah. <laughs> but um no I, i do understand the direction of the growth and it must be very difficult navigating or kind of orchestrating six personalities yeah. and having you know these kind of tight deadlines mm. and these schedules mm. and trying to orchestrate that and make it all work now and everyone is like canceling every now and again but i mean like mm. um we when i started i knew what i was doing mm. like um i just used the same processes that i've been using for um our company and basically employed that with like a free uh, a three month bank in advance so if we run into any issues or something like that we're like covered sure. so it's like um we've got a buffer of like a couple of episodes so um if anyone has like god forbid like death in the family or whatever it's like we've got episodes to cover that that time and like For sure. we, we've got space to like think about stuff i know this is the the visual arts podcast yes. and you've been basically listening to every single one yes, that comes yes. out and editing it is there anything that has been spoken of that's kind of resonated with you or it was a big surprise or anything that have kind of popped up or well, actually like every single episode has been a like a very enlightening um thing because you know being involved in the post production industry and then getting this kind of um like flashlight into the the visual arts industry is is very very interesting um for me as a person i i studied art up until the end of um a trick mm. um and i would have i would have gone into like architecture or design or draftman that was kind of the direction i was going in cuz art was what i enjoyed the most um apart from music and then you know when it came to the making the decision do i want to do art do i want to do music i decided to um you know go into sound i needed mm. to learn how to record the sounds that i'm making so i went into sound engineering and that's when you know uh, art kind of fell off my radar for mm. a bit i kept sketching and like stuff and during those times i actually had a friend from um Tanzania called Sashi 
Okay. And he um, recommended me just getting one character and drawing this character in like multiple different scenes and like whatever. So I got this character and then I named him Danny Harris and that's where the, okay. the pseudonym came from, yeah. And um, I still have this whole world and pl an idea planned out for a cartoon one day uh, for Danny Harris. So. So one day, maybe if the universe allows, that cartoon will <laughs> materialize. Um, but it's short steps, you know. Sure. It's like I'm in the post-production industry now. Um, I'm trying to do some things, um, you know, with my capabilities here. And, um, mm. you know, maybe maybe down the line, I make a good friend with a company who's doing animation and they're keen to explore, like, you know, certain things that we can do all the audio they can mm. do all the animation and then we can like actually materialize something sure. that i've had in mind for like a good 10 years already um but i'm not banking on that right now i'm probably gonna end up paying for all of it myself <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool man like sure. you know, if there's something if i can leave a cartoon behind because like I'm, I'm way into cartoons, even as a grown-up man. Yeah, like, for sure. Cartoons are fun. Well, I mean, just figuring out the the origin of yeah, Danny Harris. I mean, like I'm already uh, <laughs> hooked. I want to see more. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was like a combination between like um, uh, the music and the art. Mm. So I uh, I drew the character, and the character kind of became the art. And then I just used the character as a pseudonym for my uh, performances as uh acoustic artist and then now ever since we moved down to cape town my my facebook and instagram profiles have all been danny harris so mm -hmm. the people in cape town know me as danny harris yeah you, you know they don't know me as peter mateus and for god's sake like no one can pronounce it properly so not. <laughs> call me danny harris that's fine <laughs> for sure <laughs> but people at work they know me as peter and um people outside of work are generally kind of like uh, put back a, a bit because they're like what your your name is like not Danny sure I'm like oh no it's not it's not like something that came from nothing it's like there was like a lot of planning behind it is it a bit of a alter ego do you find you kind of put on a different mask if you decide to be Mr. Danny Harris I think I think um on stage to a certain extent yes because yeah. like um if I'm drumming um I can't see much of the people because the light's kind of always in my face or whatever. So I end up in this, um, what I call this drummer bubble. And it's just like this little bubble of me and the music that we were playing. And I always try to enjoy it as much as the people we are playing it for. Because I've rehearsed those songs hundreds of times. I do not need to think about what I'm doing anymore. Mm. Um, and that's like special because now I get to like enjoy the music while I'm performing the music um, with the people. And that's kind of uh, another another thing that I've been um, like realizing now at the end of the cycle of our um, album, which was The Great Silence. It's been two years almost since we released it. Mm. And um, it's been interesting. Uh, a lot of people, good feedback that we got. We won like best prog band for 2018. Amazing. Yeah, you know, at the Samas, which is like the double M, uh, South African Metal Music Awards. Oh, you cool. Know? And um, yeah, so that's and we didn't really do much this year mm. um, in terms of the public eye, but we've been working on like rebranding our um, band and like um you know getting more merchandise out and like uh, we registered the business trying to get like stuff to work in a way so it works like a business because sure yeah just doing music doesn't really cut it <laughs> i think yeah there's definitely a point met where you have to figure out a way to elevate it or to you know monetize it monetize it yeah. and which means growth and i think yes. sometimes people hear the word monetization and there's a sense of like selling out or yeah. corporatizing which is bad yeah. but i think ultimately there needs to be that um there's that incentive and then even a bit of validation that mm -hmm. what you're doing is worthy of people 
giving up money. Exactly. And I think that's the best affirmation because yes. people are really hooked on their money. They yeah. really like their money. You work hard for your money. Right? Yeah. So and when you so you pass that money on, you're passing on that hard work. For sure. Yeah. Um, and like we're we're actually um, yeah, this won't be airing at the time, but we're running like a Black Friday special with like a package of all our new. Uh, releases with like our new logo and stuff. Um, you, know, well, um, you had Simon on on your first episode, mm. yeah, and he actually helped um, design the logo, the the redesigned logo. Um, I helped with that. Sure. Um, so I guess I was like the creative director from the Oh God side, um, working with Simon on it. Um, we just kind of figured that, that works best. Everyone in the band kind of has like a certain set of skills. Um, we do have three sound engineers in the band, but there's definitely one that's better than all the others. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have someone like myself who's good at setting, setting up processes and like, you know, registering a brand, starting a business, that kind of stuff. So um, that's my duties. Um, we have someone else who's basically his job is just like writing as many riffs as we can as he can so mm. we can like just go through it and like make the best possible combination of them that sure. we can yeah funny enough like um, after studying sound engineering um, I stayed with my parents in Pretoria for about a year after um, doing a a tattoo apprenticeship. Um, mm. I, be, I believe you had Victor on last year, um, um, uh, last week. Sure. Yeah, and I had um, I have a good relationship with Victor. He used to um, work out of my house for a while. Okay. Um, yeah, he was. Um, he had a difficult time, and um, I had all of the equipment and stuff, and I wasn't using it. So I had this space, and then we made an agreement. So. Um, he started working out of my house um, when I was at work and like so that, that was like a your parents house no 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 this oh. was in Cape Town yeah. oh okay it was I see, like I see. a couple of months couple of so years your ago. poor parents <laughs> no, in my house um, alright yes yeah, and that um, that was during a time he was struggling um, he didn't have a place to work so I I could offer him that okay um, and the stuff that he needed and you know it was like a mutual beneficial relationship at mm. the time um, and that ended up like, you know, when I, when I started renovating my house and stuff, I didn't want, um, you know, his people having to walk around like yeah. areas <laughs> where I'm like breaking up my house and sure, stuff. Dust, uh, <laughs> so I told him like, look, dude, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to find a, a mm -hmm. new space. And then he ended up finding this wonderful space. I've been there a couple of times now and it's, it's really nice. Uh, Victor is a really cool dude to get tattooed by. Um, I found he's, he doesn't have the the air um, that I I've experienced at other studios before. Not that I've been to many studios, but like um, during my year as an apprentice, I've I've walked around studios and stuff, and like you, there is like a you know almost like a biker culture, and there's sure. like you know different biker groups like tuning each other shit. And that's kind of the same in the tattoo industry or that, mm. or that well, that was my experience of it. And that's kind of like what pushed me away from it I was like, I didn't want to be involved in something where, um, you know, that that negativity is like so prominent every day. Sure. Or if you kind of if you get it, you have to join that community to just you, you have get to a become tattoo. That. Yeah. 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 And I didn't, didn't want to become that. Um, so during the time I was working as a tattoo artist, I was, I was also working as a bartender. Um, and that is also another big thing in my life that, uh, you know, working as a bartender for two years and then moving to Cape Town, I decided to quit drinking alcohol like 100% because I ended up seeing the same people at the bar mm. every single night. And that was two years seeing the same people. And I was like, holy shit, I do not want to become that person. You <laughs> sure. Know? So I quit drinking for a good like five years and I picked it up again this year. Not like hardcore drinking, but like sure. if I get home, I'll have a whiskey. Ever since uh, we started this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like uh, there's a place for, for alcohol, I believe. Yeah. Um, I, I don't use it excessively anymore. Um, there's no benefits to using alcohol excessively so for sure um especially financially like uh, the first couple of months 
moving into Cape Town and not having to drink um, saved me out of poverty, like extreme <laughs> poverty. Uh, yeah, I didn't, didn't have much coming here. Basically came here with nothing but like one month's worth of rent mm. and um, with a, a mindset to make music. And um, here we are. Talking. Amazing. Yeah, and it just yeah. seems like you're a very busy man and you've got your, you know, finger in a number of jars of... You got, well, you you got to get them in as many jars as you can <laughs> no, today. for sure. Yeah. Especially in South Africa, like, um, you know, people don't specialize that often. Um, a lot of internationals, at least in the post-production industry, come here because they can get like four jobs done by one person mm. that in Germany maybe they would need to hire four people to do the same job sure um, so a lot of the work in the post-production industries and like even the production industries where they're shooting films they're coming to South Africa to do it um, there's like some tax rebates and stuff and things that they get they get benefits for coming here to do that too of course um, and they're saving a bunch of money because the South African actors are working for way less um, but still enough you know it's still good money for them in South Africa but it's way less than you know this production company would have paid to do it in America or something like that so it's interesting it's been an interesting field to be like exposed to um, when I studied sound engineering, I never thought that I would end up in this kind of environment, like mm. revoicing foreign content or producing podcasts or this thing or that thing. But um, I've always um, had my, my roots in music and that thing is still going. It's still going strong. And um, that's something I think won't end anytime soon. Um, that's like yeah the main focus is making making music and um hopefully creating some sort of business out of that for sure well i think we're all on the right track and we will see how the podcasts grow and i'm sure it's going to become yeah. a great fantastic thing thanks for the chat yeah it was nice to kind of yeah just talk about the the rise of the podcast. podcast. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you very much for having me. No, well, thank you for hosting me <laughs> as a host <laughs> and recording you <laughs> and recording me <laughs> and doing all the all the logistics. Anyways, thank you, Blended Audio, for making this possible. And catch me next week where I do a solo run. Thank you very much. Art Pod is a South African focused visual arts podcast hosted by Claude Chandler and produced by the generous assistance of Blended Podcasts, brought to you by Blended Audio. Thank you.